Hi ladies, I'm Kristen and I am excited to be back with you again tonight talking about what am I protecting? Um, as you recall, we're in the series, God is good. And so we're looking at different things that are um, utilized by the enemy to get us to believe a message that is different than God is good. And so tonight the question is, what am I protecting? And I want to share just a little bit of some things that I've been through in the last few years. I know we've all had kind of a rocky, bumpy ride. Um, but in the fall of 2019, uh, this began what I lovingly refer to as a multi-car crash in my life. Um, it was probably the hardest thing that I have ever been through um, as a believer, um, as a human being, as a daughter, as a sister, a wife, a friend, um, and it had started with a pretty rough road in 2019. And then in the fall, my dad had an accident um, at the end of August that landed him in ICU for um, several weeks and in the hospital for over a month and a half. And after, in, that, in that time, my brother crashed his bike and broke his neck in six places. Um, my sister-in-law had found out that she had another brain tumor. And after recovery, my dad got an infection and suddenly passed away in November. Um, after that, my sister-in-law moved in with us because she was going to be treated at Moffitt and it made sense for her and her 13-year-old to move in with my husband and I. And there were several other few things that happened during that time with my kids needing a place to stay and just, I felt like I was just taking hit after hit after hit after hit. And in January, when my sister-in-law finished her treatment and moved out, I found out I had shingles and I was like, okay, wow, now it's hitting me. And so I don't know if you can relate to that. I would imagine that many of you can look back in different seasons of your life and think, yep, that's what it felt like. It felt like a multi-car crash. And I had come through that season of loss and hits but now I had developed this stance and approach to life that wasn't good. I feel like the grace of God carried me through that season, but now I kind of saw myself approaching life with my hands up and kind of like, ah, okay, what's, what's next? What's coming? What, what do I need to be prepared for? Um, you know, you may be sitting here thinking, yeah, I, that's me. That's what I do. You know, you've gotten so used to the hits that you prepare, you learn how to prepare for them. You learn, oh, I wasn't prepared for that. So now I have to make an adjustment or now I have to make a plan. Um, you've maybe developed your go bag. It's like if disaster strikes, this is what I do. You know, um, you have a backup plan. You weren't always this way. I wasn't always this way, but you've learned it because you were unprepared in the past. And we have this instinct of protection that kicks in and we begin to live from this place of, I need to be prepared. I gotta take care of myself. I gotta protect myself. I have to at least have something that I can draw from. And little by little, the enemy works in this so that we think I'm not gonna be caught off guard again. I'm gonna put up a wall. And before we know it, we're protecting ourselves, we're protecting our stuff, we're protecting our future against calamity, and ultimately we are protecting ourselves from God. So the question is, what am I protecting? And the answer is, my stuff. That's what I'm protecting, my stuff. And you can put anything and everything into the category of stuff. Um, but today we're going to talk about how to recognize our stuff, how to deal with it, how to resist building up walls of defense as we go through life. And because the truth is there is not room for the Holy Spirit in my life and all my stuff. So 
the sticky statement that I want you to think about is when we deal with our stuff, we make room for the Holy Spirit. When we don't deal with our stuff, we just make more room for our stuff. And I know that we all collectively want to make room for the Holy Spirit because my stuff does not give me a hope in a future. The Holy Spirit gives me a hope and a future. And so let's dig into that tonight. Um, in Romans 8 verse 7, it says, for the sinful nature is always hostile to God. Wow, that is a strong word. The sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's laws and it never will. There is a sin nature in each of us that is anti all the things that God wants for us. It is contrary to everything that God wants to do in us, that he wants to reveal to us. When we think about that hostile, like that is an action word to me. That is a stance of resistance against what God is doing. And it's always working to make me feel secure and significant and stable outside of trusting God trying to get me and you to make agreements with the enemy in order to protect myself. Like imagine shaking hands with the enemy and saying, oh yes, I believe what you're saying, come on into my life. This is what that sin nature does. It makes agreements with the enemy and God is always working to reveal who he is. He is showing us that he is our only source of significance, stability, and security, and he gives us a helper. In John 14, 15 through 17, it says, if you love me, Jesus is saying, if you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, a helper, who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads you into all truth. We are not stuck. We are not in a place where we're helpless and hopeless and our only options are to protect ourselves and brace for the next hit of life. We're not left standing here trying to hold back the forces that are trying to get us to believe that God isn't good. We have help. We can trust that God will help us. So what do you do? You know, right now, there's a big focus on self-improvement, on knowing yourself better, on knowing your type, on knowing your personality, on, well, this is the way I am. And, you know, I, lo I love all that stuff because I'm a context person and I love to know, like, God, what's the context of how you created me and how you gifted me and, and what you want to do in my life? And how is this thing that the enemy keeps trying to say is a bad thing? How is this a good thing in my life? So I, I am not against any of that. I love that stuff. But the truth is, a better version of me is still all about me. A better version of you is still all about you. And the enemy wants us protecting me, guarding me, defending me, so that it will all be about me. And God is saying, hey, look, look up. It's all about me. And if you'll look at me and you'll focus on me, I'm going to give you all those things that you're trying to achieve on your own and in your own strength. So trying to live a better version of me is not what we're after. Trying to live a more surrendered version of me that is the goal. So how do I live more surrendered? How do I, I mean, I know it's easy to talk about. It's like, okay, I need to surrender. I give up. But what does that look like every day? How do I walk it out? How do I actually lay down the things that when I'm doing this? Well, the first thing is you take the risk. Whatever the enemy is telling you, don't do that. Don't let that happen. Don't don't be vulnerable. Don't expose that sin. Don't be, you know, don't let your guard down. Don't let people into your emotions. Don't take a risk. The enemy is constantly getting us to minimize the risk, to minimize our pain, 
And Jesus was a risk taker. All through the New Testament, Jesus is saying, you know you can't do this on your own? That's what I have grace for. All of you who think you can be right on your own, no grace for you. This is Jesus judging the Pharisees and the religious leaders and saying, no grace. If you think you can be right with God in your own strength, there's no grace. But when you recognize you can only be right with me helping you, all the grace. He has all the grace. So asking for help, recognizing where you're bracing and, and asking God in to that, surrendering the walls that and taking down that guard that you have with God. You know, the thing that we can do is pray, God, make up the difference and redeem those broken places in my life. This is what I've had to do to work through this pain that I went through a few years ago and to walk out of those habits of protecting myself is God, yes, this might happen, but I invite you in. I invite you to heal those broken places. Show me who you are. Show me where you're working on my behalf in this and show me the areas that I'm protecting my sin. Show me where I'm protecting my emotions and protecting my stuff. Imagine God meeting you there. Imagine God answering your prayers and walking you out. Imagine linking arms with other women and instead of protecting ourselves from each other and from God, we are protecting the truth of God in each other. You know, when I go back a few years and I look at the last two years of my life, three years, four years, five years, I could not do this without the women in my life who were fighting for truth in me as much as I was believing for God to heal me. They were right there with me. And as God was working those things out in me, he was working things out in them. We need each other. That's where we want to live. We want to deal with our stuff so that we can make room for the Holy Spirit. Because when we do, he will answer. Psalm 86 verse 5 says, O oh Lord, you are so good, so ready to forgive, so full of unfailing love for all who ask for help. Let's pray. God, thank you that we can trust in you, that when we ask for help, you answer, that when we come with repentance, you forgive us. God, we repent of trying to protect ourselves, of trying to defend ourselves, of the walls that we've put up between me and you, God, between us and you, God. We repent and we're asking you, God, to come in and heal the broken places in our lives and restore hope in you. God, help us to deal with our stuff so that we can make room for the Holy Spirit in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.